In this revision session, we're going to look at question four. Now, question four is quite a bit bigger than the ones we've looked at before, and it really does lead in to the bigger question of mixing. It will test a lot of what you know from components one and components two, plus a lot of your theory and your calculation knowledge. Now, if you're enjoying these these videos and you want to see more please subscribe please give us a like since we've been doing these um, over the last I don't know two or three weeks we have gained an extra hundred subscribers which is amazing so we're almost up to 500 now which is absolutely brilliant um, if you want to support this channel and if you want to see more then give us that subscribe subscription and give us a thumbs up um, our aim is to try and start producing at least one of these a week now so we're currently on track but if you want to see that continue you know that's what you need to do so let's look at question four so once again question four is part of section a um, section a is worth 85 marks so we only have one more question after this question for it is a lot bigger um, and I'll explain that as we go on so things that you need to know for question four once again you will need to know how to import and export audio but we've covered that so much by now um, you will be tested on your mixing and producing techniques and your your theory um, the questions will be mixed um, this particular sample question is worth 30 marks as you can see it's already worth three times as much as all of the other questions we've looked at so far so it's quite a big one it is going to test you quite heavily and this is probably the first time in the exam where you're going to really feel pushed to to kind of understand what's going on but remember if a question comes up and you're not sure you can turn to your DAW for the information and more often than not you will be able to find that information in your DAW um, you will also be question on multitudes of area including um, creative effects and dynamic processing so let's look at the questions from the particular sample so once again we are importing a track this particular one is the vocal so you have to import this to a new track in your DAW um, ensure that it begins at, at bar one and make sure it's synchronized in and then continue always read that particular instruction because sometimes it doesn't want you to put it at bar one some like in question three where it wants you to put it in a very specific place so just be very very careful about that um, and then it gives you the first question which is just one mark so don't go too heavy on this it just states why is a, a gate used so you can just answer as simply as you want you can just say just to re remove noise boom and that will get you the mark so don't overthink it just just go for the obvious answer so for question um, for B this is a massive question um, so it starts off by saying to you look there's a graph below here um, and you need to identify things on that graph so it says identify two features of the graph that show that this is a way a this is this belongs to a vocal so just carefully look at it and what do you see so straight away what I see is some kind of sine wave so you can say that you can say it's close to a sine wave. You you should also notice that it's very similar, or it's it each frequency is very similar. So you can say, look, it's it's periodic. It, it it's similar. It's periodic. It it kind of it's always the same and it's very fluent, if you like. Um, so once again, keep that simple. It's only worth two marks or just one one particular answer, and then you can move on. The next one it does ask you to label the axis. So you just you just need to draw an arrow and then identify which question it's from. So you can just draw an arrow and just put the number two next to it. So for the amplitude, you can just draw an arrow into the air and put a number two for it. For the label of the, the periods, you can just draw um, a horizontal arrow and put the label next to it. Simple as that, and then just move on. So for this next one, it says identify the pitch of the vocal in bar nine. Now, if you're not sure what the pitch is, remember you can turn to your DAW at this point. You can run it through flex time. You can look at the um, audio editor or even, even still, you can run a pitch tune on it. So if you insert um, a tuner into that particular track, it will give you the pitch back. So it's nice and easy. And then because it's only worth one, it's not expecting you to know the octave at this range so you can just say look this is an E or this is an A or whatever the particular note is and that's it so use your DAW to get those marks so for the next one 
um, then it asks you to identify the frequency. Now this is where you are going to have to have a bit of knowledge behind you. So I would definitely say to you is go away and find out the frequencies of, of all of the common notes and then find out how to work out. So f say for instance if you know what a middle C is, um, work out what the calculations below the middle C is and what the calculations above it. Just so you've got that basic information of how to calculate frequencies. Um, so it says here the frequency of A below middle C is 2 to 220 hertz. Calculate the frequency of the vocal on bar 9. So the first thing is you need to know what that 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 particular pitch was and then you need to make your calculation so you can either do the working out and that will get you the two marks or you can just input the information and you'll get the two marks for that as well so just by saying something like 330 hertz that will get you the information that will get you the two marks even though it's worth two marks even though it's worth two marks um, what the reason they're giving you two marks is is because you can if you wish to show them the calculation and show them the working out so, um, for question C then, it's a theory question, and you're going to need to know about Nyquist theory. So it says here, the vocals digitally recorded using a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. Explain why, according to Nyquist theorem, that recording quality is sufficient to record this vocal performance. So it's worth four marks. So once again, if you put down something, you just have to say why, and that will get you the whole mark. So you could say something like, um, Nyquist theorem explains that 44.1 is the range or a similar range to the human ear and that would get you two marks there and then you could explain something else. You will need to do a bit of research on these particular elements. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so the vocal so the next one, D, it says the, the vocal ah, the vocal main dot wave has some intrusive noise in bars 21 to 22. Import vocal clean into your DAW and use this to remove the noise from the vocal. So this is quite a common one where you'd, you'd take out a piece from that clean version and you would comp it with the version before, just like you would have done in component 1. Now, the thing where this, the reason this is worth four marks is because in order to get those full four marks, it's meant to be clean, it's meant to be in time, and it's meant to be very, very subtle if you replace a bit of audio. So that does take a little bit of working out as well. If you haven't removed the correct bit, or if you haven't completely got rid of the audio, this will cost you a mark or two as well. So for E, um, create a harmonized backing vocal track by retuning material taken from the lead vocal in bars 33 to 36. So point one, you have to retune always and forever to D below the lead vocal. So if you've got a full pledge DAW, you should have something like flex time, um, which is available in Logic, and you should just be able to move the note as if it was MIDI. Um, sometimes this will ask you to re rephrase it as well. Um, this particular one just wants you to retune it. So you, you will need to make it sound natural as well as the retuning. That's why it's worth three marks. So you can't just retune it and drop it there. It does have to sound like it should be. And then for point two, it says retune stop to an E below the lead vocal. So that's a really nice task just to make sure that you understand how to do these things and, and using the full capacity of your DAW. So for question F, um, once again, it's an essay based question. It's worth eight marks. So it says here for this vocal recording, explain how compression parameters will be set to keep the volume of the vocal consistent in the context of the mix. So once again, this is, is very much um, find a reason and then give an answer. So for the reason you could give any parameter in your in your compressor so you could say something like threshold or you could say um, ratio or anything like that and that would get you the one mark but in order to get all eight marks you'd have to explain why that's important so i have a i have a one from the exam mark here which says um so you're going to say about threshold so you can say i would use a low threshold the reason for this is because there are some quiet phrases and that would get you two marks 
Um, and if you if you structure your answer like that, you know you're guaranteeing yourself that you will get these higher marks. And then finally, you have to bounce down this particular track that you've just been working on as question four with your candidate number, making sure you put it in your folder, ready to go on the CD after the exam. Um, I would always say to my students, bounce down these tracks as you go along. So preparing for this question, and once again, this can be taken from any area of music text, so just be very aware of that. But if we're working through the notes that we have here, this is a good place to start. So the first thing I would say to you guys is gain a good understanding of how effects work and be able to apply and explain um, why this, why it's so. Okay, so understanding this, and what I say to my students is pair up with somebody and just to have a conversation. So say, okay, Ask your, ask your buddy um, what are the parameters of a compressor and say, okay, what does that do? And the more you talk about these sorts of things, the more confident you'll become at explaining them. Um, and this is where buddy work comes in quite useful. So the next thing is practice using the editing tools to manipulate pitch and frequency, um, e.g. The, the flex time. So that probably will come up. Now that most of the big doors have got this functionality, you're gonna see that a lot. They wanna make sure that you understand that. Um, next one, practice removing um, noise from an audio track, either by comping two tracks together or by using a gate or using some kind of frequency manipulation to, to remove some noise. Um, the next one then, so gain a good understanding of digital recording theory. That's always a good one. The Nyquist theory and anything to do with digital recording pretty much comes up every year. And as you can see in this particular exam, it was, it was worth a few marks. So not having that information is going to cost you quite heavily. Um, so the next one and final one then, understand how to interpret a waveform and calculate pitch and frequency information. So the pitch side shouldn't cause you too much trouble, especially when you've got the audio and you've got all these tools available to you to, to actually analyze this data. The frequency might not be so easy to calculate. There are, there are tools that you can get to, to calculate frequency, but there's probably no substitute for actually having that information in your mind about which frequency is which. And even if you just know that middle C is a certain frequency, and if you shift either way, you'll get another note based on another frequency. Um, so just have that information available to you, and just once again, make sure you can explain that and and you're okay and confident. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Once again, if you need more information on this exam, musictechstudent.co.uk, we've got absolutely loads coming up, and we're always working on new resources, so um, just give us your support there. Give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.